I'm there for that seabaliciousness. We love it, and she ain't going anywhere. But right now, we're going to talk to parents, and specifically uh, when it comes to our little one's growing journey, moms and dad only want what's best for our kids, and something Siba knows only too well. And introducing solid foods is obviously a milestone for mom and baby, but it also comes with different factors that need to be considered, like food allergies, dun dun dun, that can become overwhelming for your little ones. Any parent going through this right now can testify to that. Pediatrician and allergist Tulja Trakamji now joins us this morning to discuss this further. I mean, we've delved deep into this conversation and I always, I kind of feel like I get a free consult because <laughs> um, anyone with small kids, these things do become quite a big thing and there's nothing worse than seeing your child suffer through anything, even if it's a moderate rash. But the, the, on the other end of that scale, it can get quite intense and obviously there can be extreme allergies. So thank you so much for, for guiding us through this process. When we look at food allergies as a whole, why is it so important that we introduce a, a diverse range of foods to our little ones? Not just keep them in one lane, but actually expose them. Um, we were just talking about that now, Graham, um, because food allergy, firstly, is increasing in the world. We hear about it now more than we ever did before. And the idea is always, you don't want to have the food allergy. Yeah. I always tell moms when they come to me for the diagnosis of a food allergy, is our long-term aim is, let's try to undiagnose the allergy. Let's try to have a normal quality of life. And this now is a whole complete different issue because the quality of life issues that somebody has when they get diagnosed with a food allergy is often not given as much importance as it should. Um, you know this firsthand. Every time you go to a restaurant, every time your kid goes to a party, at school, um, if one child has a peanut allergy, every child cannot take a peanut butter sandwich to school. So it has huge effects financially as well. Um, I always use an example of a milk allergy because for some reason milk is one of the most... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this term loosely fashionable allergies to have, I think, in the 21st century. <laughs> no, I think century. things do become, yes. you know, they, they yes. hit, hit the market within yes. a social media space and then suddenly they do become a viral, excuse the pun, but, you know, a Ab viral allergy. <laughs> Absolutely. Cow's milk is something we want to blame for lots of things. And financially, um, if you have to buy milk from the, the normal supermarket, you're going to pay between 10 and 15 rand a litre. If you've got to buy a plant-based milk, it's almost five times that price. Yeah, for sure. So for a parent, you know, with kids, if you've got to do that every single day, it has it major adds up. Yeah. It adds up. It has major consequences. So always doing what you can to prevent the situation arising in your home. When we look at, and I'm, I'm going to, this is quite self-indulgent because I've been grappling with something with my boy for the longest time with, with a skin rash that we thought was one thing and now we're beginning to think it's something else because it hasn't gone away. Skin rashes seem to be one of the first kind of markers that there is at least some kind of, of issue there. But when is it allergy? When is it eczema? How do we discern? So is a skin rash generally the first kind of warning sign that there is something wrong or what should we be looking out for? Definitely, definitely. I, I I think we've talked about it so many times on the show, um, the allergic march or atopic march, but I yeah. think we can't tell moms about this enough. Yeah, completely. On day zero, when your baby is born, often you're going to find the cradle cap, that dry scalp. That starts to tell you that there's a bit of dehydration and lack of moisture in the barrier of the skin. And that then is a marker because the surface area on the head is the largest surface area when baby is initially born. Okay. That would then develop sometimes into eczema. So, you know, we've also talked about this at great length, ensuring that you in, have adequate moisture and you're maintaining that skin barrier, that barrier yeah. all of the time. Because whether it's a food allergy or an environmental allergy, your skin is an organ that's part of your immune system. So your skin is going to react to dust, it's going to react to grass pollen in our it's pollen season. It's the canary season. in the mine shaft. It's yeah, exactly, it really it's the canary in the mine shaft. So allergy in a big way would present on the skin and eczema would be one of the biggest markers of that. That being said, you know, bar going to a specialist and starting this journey with, with you, how do we best protect our children through this food journey and as we introduce them to more things, how do we protect them from possibility of, of onset of an allergies? Um, I think I should hashtag this phrase, but expose, expose, expose. Okay. Exposure is the key. In, in the 21st century, um, kids are growing up in the environment that um, is, is marred by climate change, pollution, deadly viruses, um, we can't prevent them from being exposed to those things. But what we want to do is decrease the risk 
of the diseases and the illnesses that they are at a heightened risk of getting, allergies being one of them. So you want to ensure that the immune system is being exposed, whether it's to the animals, the cats and dogs, or whether it's to the foods. And then now coming to foods, which is our topic, is when babies' immune systems get exposed to the protein. So let's use milk or peanut. Those are the two commonest the two allergies yeah. that we hear about, or even egg, egg white. When the body is being exposed to that protein, your body at an earlier time is more likely to then make its own antibodies and be more tolerant rather than be sensitive and be more allergic. Um, and this has been proven with studies around the world where kids that were prevented from eating things and kept away from foods had higher levels of food allergy versus those who were just, just isn't ready fed for foods have lower levels of allergy. Absolutely brilliant. Well, unless you have a specialist like us to, to lean on, I would suggest you do that from the onset. Get a dog when your baby arrives. Start introducing them. Never forget what a wonderful, amazing machine your body actually is. But you've got to give it the information so it can develop and grow and build that immune system. So introduce one allergen at a time when the time is right. And remember all of Tulja's advice. Absolutely golden. In fact, it's how I brought up my kids. So we love you. Thank you so much. Um, and again, I say this every day when we have this Specialist here, the bill is in the mail. It's not that expensive, but we'll chip in as well too. So thank you so much. I hope you'll always know how much I love you. I hope that you never stop learning and growing. It all begins with purity.